Hi, I'm Rob Cosin. Welcome to my shop. I'm going to show you how to make tapered legs by hand. Now, why taper a leg? Well, I think it does a lot to add to the look of a piece of furniture. Adds a level of finesse. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show you how to do it. Stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell, which will alert you whenever we release a new video. Anytime we use a new tool or technique, we'll leave a description down below so that make it easier for you to find. All right, let's get back to work. I'm going to show you some examples of tapered legs, and I'm going to show you I'm going to compare a straight leg versus a tapered leg and see if you can not visualize how different it looks. Now if you're Super Dave, pay close attention to this. So here's a, there's two examples, actually they're almost identical. It's a little pine end table. This has a tapered leg. So if you can imagine a leg that was, looked like that, where it had no taper, to me it almost makes it look uh, clumsy, maybe even, uh, I don't know, too heavy. You put a tapered leg on there, and this is the same thing, and it just adds, I think, a level of finesse. It lightens it. Stand back and look at it, and it just, it does something to it that elevates it as a piece of furniture. Now, this is a taper that we're doing on all four sides. So this piece, which is inch and a half at the top, is tapering down to be a square that is three quarter at the bottom. But I've also done it where I have just tapered this inside surface and that inside surface, which gives it a very interesting look. I did a dining room table not lo that long ago. And uh, the other option is to taper the outside and bring it in. That one I don't like quite as much, but this for this type of table I think is perfect. A couple other things to note, you want to make sure you start your taper below where the apron engages. You don't want to try to do it right on. Almost looks like a miss. So you want to come down a little bit before you introduce that taper. And of course, as we've already done, you have to cut your mortise before you introduce your taper just because it's a lot easier to work with your piece in chopping the mortise when this is in its full width, full, um, full size, just easier to clamp and hold on. Anyway, that's my reasoning behind taper. We're going to work with this piece of pine, which is very easy to uh, chisel, cut, saw. And it's great to learn techniques like this on before you introduce the uh, extra effort that's required for hardwood. Now this is the apron that we've cut. We've already chopped the mortise. We did that in a previous video. If you missed that, we'll leave the link down below. <coughs> and if I was building this piece, I'd have to cut this mortise as well, but we just did that one. So as I mentioned, now this actually sits on the top. You don't want your taper to start, start right there. You've got to come down a little bit. Give yourself a little bit of what I might call a landing area. Now I'm going to lay this out with a pen, and particularly on pine, I would much prefer a pencil. A ballpoint actually will stick into the into the uh, pine, but in order for it to be show on the camera, we're going to have to use a pen. I'm going to suggest. Uh, I think we can get away with a quarter of an inch, so we'll come a quarter of an inch below. Now, just to make this a little easier to work, I'm going to draw that or carry that line all the way around. I also want to check and make sure that everything is square. And in particular, I want things to be square to that face. When this goes together, we want that's that is essentially going to be our reference surface. So checking off of that, that looks good. That looks good. And that one's off a little bit, so I'm going to take a pass with the plane. We're a little bit high on this side. And the easiest way to do this, to get rid of that high side, is simply run the plane so that this side of the plane is flush with this side. And that area right there where there is no blade will prevent me from taking any more off of this low edge. And the only thing that comes off is the opposite high edge. Now, based on how much it was out, uh, I think maybe four passes. Now, in order to make that straight or uh, flat from there to there, there's an area here that hasn't been touched. We'll take one complete pass. 
I still have pen mark on there, so I'm gonna go one more. I'll check that. Okay, that's good. And I'll put that line back on. If you keep everything square, then your results become far more predictable. Or if you make an error, it's a lot easier to chase back and find out where you made the mistake if everything is kept square. So down on this end, we're going to draw in our, uh, our three quarter inch. So this is inch and a half. So three quarter. And we're gonna go three eighths either side of it. Now, I've got a straight edge here, which is a piece of wood. And I'm gonna draw a line. Right to that taper, or right to that uh, mark we put on there. Now there's a couple of ways that we can do this and I'll share both of them with you. And if there was a lot of material, I would consider sawing it, but we can actually, and because this is pine, we can blast through that rather quickly. Now rather than do that again on the other side, I'm just gonna carry those lines over. And one of the downsides to using this pen is that it has a tendency to bleed and that's gonna get all over the work. The eighth inch marks are a little less confusing. So three quarter is the middle. Oh, what am I doing? Three eighths on either side. That'll be the footprint that we'll end up with. We gotta carry this up onto the surface. You don't really need to put it on both sides, but it also acts as a reference to make sure that you're keeping it square. And when I say that, what I mean is as I'm planing this, if I'm at the same distance from my line on this side that I'm on that side, then I know I'm keeping this surface square to that surface. That's what I meant. So we'll draw it on all four sides. Now, even though this is pine, doing it in hardwood wouldn't be much different. Okay, so there's our layout lines. So if the grain is relatively straight, we wanna plane with the grain. And if the grain is running like this and we're planing down, it's gonna be nice and smooth. We'll be able to finish right from the plane. I'm gonna put this between bench dogs to hold it fast. Now we're gonna lose part of our line. So I was dumb in doing that. I should have only done one at a time, so pardon me. All right, I'm gonna bring the blade out. I actually wanna check first to make sure that it's parallel to the sole so we don't end up throwing this off. Now, what I'm gonna do is start here. And the idea is that we eventually wanna get this surface parallel to that line. So once we're there, we can just continue until we get down to the line. So I'll start here about back maybe five or six inches. Take a pass. Come back a little further with each. Got lots to go, so I'm gonna start over here again. Look at 
this. Still not parallel. I'm gonna have to go back and put those lines on again. Okay, now that that is looking pretty close to parallel. So I'm gonna pull my blade in, maybe half of what I had. Now, when you do this, there's not much of a difference. You can, you can see there's a little bit, but you want your plane to reference on here, not back here. So when you start your cut, make sure you've got enough pressure here and you've got enough of the plane sitting on the forward part, just so you understand. There's where we're starting our cut. So in order for me to lay us to continue on this plane, I've got to make sure that I'm referencing off of that plane and not allow it to drop back. Now, I got a bit of a bump, it looks like right here. Fix it while you have the opportunity, meaning you've got enough material. Pull my blade in a little bit more. I'm a little close up here. Start right about here. Still too heavy, bringing the blade in more. Brought in too much. All the weight on the front. Now, let me just check this. Okay, still got too much material up here. So I'll focus on first foot or so. You gotta love it when that stuff comes off like that. It's one of the nicest things about planting this northern white pine. It just comes out of there so easy. Okay, what are we looking at? Maybe focus back here a little bit. Now, if you're gonna do a partial pass, you wanna make sure that you lift your plane off before you stop. Otherwise, you end up dealing with that and then you gotta go in and pick it off so it doesn't interfere with the next pass. Whereas if you just finish or continue to plane, but just lift the plane off, it'll come off clean. Okay, I think we can concentrate on full length passes. Now, a little bit of wax makes it even easier. That starting is trickier than you may think because it's so easy for your plane to reference on the flat instead of on the taper. That's why I keep checking it like this to make sure that I'm not throwing that off. Okay. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna draw a line up here just so I can keep track of where I'm starting. So make sure that I never end up cutting beyond this. Now, I got a funny feeling we're taking more off the other side, so let's take a quick look. Check and see if we've kept it square. Oh, no, we didn't. We got a lot of material. A lot of material taken off of this side. So, what I'm gonna do is come in and do that same procedure, keeping the plane flush on my right side so that it's only taking material off the high left side. And it was off by quite a bit, so it's gonna take several passes to correct it. And we'll take a full width pass. It's gonna take two. Check that. No, we're still high. We're not on our line yet, so we're okay. We've got room to correct. Flush on this side. Only removing this side. I don't know if you can see, but there's a line running right like this. 
and that will tell you that you're obviously not square. So we've got to, if we had it square, where the plane starts cutting would be right across like this. Now I'm going to take a quick look to make sure that my blade is not, yeah, it is, it was protruding more on the right side. I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not, but we're now at an angle something like that. Got to be careful. I'm going to put a couple of lines on here so that you'll be able to see it. Do a full width. Okay, so now we're getting our, we're, our pass is, well, wait a second now, let me get it one more time. There, we're pretty much square across there. Okay, so let's examine this closely. My lines weren't, uh, my lines weren't in sync because that shows being square now. However, we're almost at a line on this side and yet we still have wood above the line on this side. But we're close to where we want to be. I'd say we probably need to take a few passes and not go all the way to the end to kind of have this catch up with that. Each one I'll reach out a little bit farther. No, I still need to get more back here. So what I'm doing is I'm planning to here and then to here, and then to here, and then to there. Makes it a little easier to see where you are. Okay, I'm gonna pull the blade in. Use the edge of the plane to check and see. We want that taper to be nice and straight, and it is. Down here, we've got a little hint of a line. And we'll just watch. I think we're right where we need to be in terms of how much line we have left here and how far from the line we are back here. Okay, I can see lines just about disappeared. I think one more pass. Okay, that does it. Now I've got to put that line back on in order to do the other one. So I'll just do one right now. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my bench as a shooting board. And I keep lots of this MDF around, and this is half inch. And the reason is it's nice and flat and uniform thickness. I need it to elevate the leg, and I'll show you why. Now we want, it should be good. Now I need to tap those bench dogs down to pull that tight. Remember the blade doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the plane. So I have to elevate the workpiece to get it into the blade. But by doing it like this, I don't have to worry about trying to keep it square like we did on the last exercise. We just have to push it back and forth. And you get to have your line right here, you can easily see. I'm gonna actually put some wax both there and on the sole. Now the only downside to this is planes are a little difficult to hold on their side. But if you can get used to it. So what I'm doing is taking material off here so we can eventually get a surface that is parallel to that line. And then from that point, it's just a matter of getting down to the line. Okay, we have less here than we do here, so we'll come back out here to the tip. Now, I'm taking a fairly heavy cut. I'm 
how we look. Still, maybe pass up here and then reach back. Same idea. You've got to you've got to avoid having that bounce right here. So I'm just twisting my, with my hand. I'm twisting the plane so that the uh, toe or the piece of the plane forward of the blade is what guides the cut as opposed to allowing it to reference off of the back. Still have lots of wood, so I'm still going to take that heavy cut. Now, if you're new to this, you might actually want to wear a glove because it'll actually wear your hand raw, forcing it down into there. I've pulled the blade in and do it a little bit more. A little bit more. Actually went too far on that one. A little more. Okay, we have less material here than we do back here, so we're gonna take some partial cuts and then pull off right about there. Maybe one more. And now tie them all together. Still run, running out of material here as opposed to back here, so we won't go all the way down. Remember, you've got to pull away before you stop pushing. So you exit nice and clean. I also find it easier if you run your opposite hand against the board right across from the blade. Seems to give you a little more control. Okay, so if we look over here, can you see this part right here? If you look right here, you've got a nice square line where the plane has been cutting. So we know we're good. Don't have to bother looking at the other side. And I've got about three and a half inches to go before I get to that line. Okay, I have a, a line around here that is parallel to this. I've still got ink line right here. You may want to take a look at that. See, see how much we have. We just have our pen line. And up here, we're inch and three quarters away from where we want to be. Just the thickness of the pen line. I'll make sure this is down tight. We're less than an inch away. We've got about half the line, so it looks good in terms of both ends being where we want them. Still have a little bit of line. We're three-eighths of an inch away. At this point, I'm gonna watch them both before each and after each pass. I've got a quarter of an inch to go here, and I'm just seeing the line disappear. Eighth of an inch, line has disappeared. I'll take one partial pass. I'm almost at the line. I'm going to pull the blade in. And I should be able to finish this off with one pass. Okay, line has disappeared. And I'm right at my mark. Okay. Now we've got one, to, two sides to go, but we're going to do this one the same. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to pull this back so that my board is referencing off of, or I'm keeping my, I'm keeping my, uh, my tapered leg so that this square section is parallel to the bench top. That part is sticking up in the air. Hold that firmly. And then tap those dogs down. 
just so that it's not allowing that piece of MDF to move around. And we'll go ahead and do the exact same process. Okay, we're just about cut a quarter of an inch there and with the lines already disappeared. So take a partial pass and then one light pass all the way. Now I like to do that one light pass. Actually, I didn't get what I wanted, but I'm gonna stop there. I wanna get rid of any little transition mark and I've got one right there. So I'm gonna make the blade, uh, pull the blade in even more. Okay, I got rid of it. Now, same idea on the last one. I've gotta go in and put the line back in. Okay, four sides done. Now, the last thing we wanna do is how are we gonna address these sharp corners? The problem with not addressing them is this. Every time the vacuum cleaner hits that, it's gonna show terribly. So you just can't have sharp corners. You could radius it, but it's not my favorite. I would much prefer to go in and cut a chamfer, not a big one, just, a, uh, just one that's just enough that you can tell it was intentional. Now it looks, feels better if I went this way. Also don't want to interfere with, I don't have a whole lot of reveal out here when it's assembled. So you have to bear that in mind too. Now this one is being done referencing off of this surface. This one I referenced off the taper. This one I referenced off that square. Now I'm looking at that and thinking, you know, it feels good. Maybe a little bit more. And then we'll pick that up. Now, we do the same thing on all four. But one more thing I want to do. If you make a table like that with square edges, the first time that gets moved roughly and the bump goes across the floor like that, there's a chance that that wood is going to splinter. So if you come in and just cut a neat little chamfer on all four corners, kind of like in the same way that we cut a little chamfer on the back side of a board before we plane across the end grain. This will protect that wood from splintering out. And you can actually get to the point where you can do this by eye and get those nice and even. So I'm looking at the width of that. This one needs a little bit more, a little bit more. I'm just gonna line up the miters. This one could use a little more and a little heavier on the left. And this one, I'll just take it from this point to that point. There you go. Now, that'll sit in there with that piece in place. And that's what I mean by not taking your chamfer too much. It left a little bit right there. Now, if I went too far, I could always take some more material off of there. And if you ended up taking your, in fact, I may have, I don't know if that's it or not. If I ended up taking this taper up too far, I could always come in here, plane the flat a little bit just to bring it back, back down to where I want. But you can see where we just started to lose the line that we're pretty much there. Final step would be to just to plane those off. Here's your tapered leg. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. Now I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools that we actually manufacture right here, as well as our workshops, both in person and online. Good luck.